Hi everyone, this is my run on the latest Act 2 Final Chapter Part 2 Lufenia Fight, which is a quest level 200 and this is the fight associated with the debut of Warrior of Lights, LD and Burst Weapons and as always, before heading into the actual fight, I'll be giving a brief overview of the fight itself and the party setup that I used. As always, I will also be including a timestamp in the video description. So if you are interested only in specific sections of the fight, you can just click on the link on the timestamp to jump ahead. So coming to this fight, it has uh, two waves. The first wave comprised of uh, Shinryu, who notably is immune to HP attack disable. Shiryu itself isn't too difficult, assuming you have Warrior of Light with at least his LD. Notably, when it uses Fulgan Rain, it uh, removes all your party's non-framed buffs and it applies an effect, sort of like an aura that will prevent you from uh, healing yourself. But the goal on the first wave is, as long as you apply steady pressure, the Shinryu should be dead or near dead pretty soon after it uses his Fulgan Rain ability. With Warrior of Light and his LD weapon, you shouldn't be taking HP damage from Shinryu at all. So therefore you don't really have a need to heal and you can just wait until you have gone into the second wave to heal up any the HP loss you might incur on the first wave. For example, when using Weavey and his LD uh, with the HP drain effect. Coming to the second wave, which is the challenge in this fight. Again, it's Shinryu, but I guess it's in a darkness form. And this Lufenia fight is the first fight that introduces the special orb countdown, which you do need to pay attention for because the, the orb appears after Shinryu first uses its recast ability and will only go away after it uses its recast ability a second time. When the orb comes out the first time, it has a count of 5. And as you can see here, each time any of your characters take a turn, the count goes down by 1. And when Shinryu takes a turn, the count goes down by 2. You really do not want the count to tick down to 0. Because when it goes down to zero, Shinryu will unleash a, an attack called Trinity Plus, which is quite devastating because it removes all buffs and debuffs, including framed ones, and will unleash a group brave and HP attack, which because you, your shields have been removed from the buff removal effect, will hurt quite a lot. And even if you do survive this attack, it will grant Shinryu a Brave and HP regen buff after this attack is over. So to prevent this attack from ever happening, you can actually freeze the orb countdown by just ensuring Shinryu always has less than 15,000 brave bravery. So, so in other words, as long as you keep Shinryu broken or near broken, the orb would not count down and eventually Shinryu will just use its recast ability again and the orb will disappear. So it is a pretty simple and straightforward orb mechanic in this fight. The other thing you need to take, off, take note of is that Shinryu on the second wave has auras and you don't need to memorize what the auras do, the game actually will give you a text prompt whenever Shinryu changes his aura and will actually tell you what the aura actually does. Shinryu will always start the fight off in the yellow aura mode and thereafter every few turns and this can actually also happen during your character's turn. Shinryu doesn't need to have its turn before it changes aura. It will cycle between from yellow aura to blue, blue to green and then green to purple. The yellow and green aura is quite insignificant. Yellow aura only prevents own knockback and delay. So if you do not use units that rely on delay or knockback mechanics, 
the yellow aura is inconsequential. The green aura uh, likewise is the same. Uh, the hits do become guaranteed so you can't rely on evasion but uh, so long as you build around this and don't prioritize evasion as a means to survive the green aura is also pretty inconsequential it does heal shinryu ba uh, hp based on brave damage dealt but assuming if you have shield based characters especially warrior of light the shields will actually absorb the brave damage dealt and therefore shinryu will have very minimal healing while under the green aura so therefore the green aura is also pretty inconsequential the purple and blue aura though are quite an annoyance uh, the purple aura will actually prevent you from HP healing that itself isn't too bad because as long as warrior of light has shield and his LD buff is up you shouldn't be taking any HP damage from Shinryu at all however Preventing Brave region effects uh, will cut down your damage significantly because many abilities uh, count on having a Brave region effect to deal significant amount of damage. So for example, Warrior of Light's shield ability, his S1, will give him a significant Brave region before unloading this uh, as an HP attack. So when the purple aura is up, using his shield will actually you will actually not get the brave region effect and you will do significantly less HP damage on that attack. The blue aura I feel is the worst because while the blue aura is up, it's the other way around. The brave region effects work, but all brave hits onto Shinryu will be reduced to zero. In a way, it's very similar to Cypher and his EX ability that uh, reduces all brave damage taken. So the, the way to get around the purple and blue aura is to try to have characters that have both brave region type of attacks as well as attacks that rely on brave hits to, to accumulate brave and, and dump it as HP damage. So Warrior of Light is a very good example of this. When Shinryu has his blue aura up, you can use Warrior of Light as one his shield ability because the damage from that skill mainly comes from Brave Region rather than Brave Attacks. And when Shinryu has the purple aura up, you can use either Warrior of Light's Troll Shield, his second skill, his EX or his LD mainly because the HP damage from those attacks rely primarily on brave hits. Another example here would be Vivi. When blue aura is up, you can use Vivi's focus to brave region into an HP dump. And when purple aura is up, you can use uh, Vivi's fire or double fire ability or even his EX. Uh, because the damage from that primarily comes from the brave attacks rather than brave region. Your damage will still be significantly lower but uh, you still will be able to at least push some amount of damage through. The recast ability that it has is pretty um, non-threatening uh, in a sense. So it's a basic group AOE brave and HP attack which Again, if you have Warrior of Light with his LD up, uh, pretty much does nothing. It does prevent you from summoning for a few turns, but uh, you can actually get around that by just waiting until the, this effect is over before summoning. Trinity plus are covered, uh, and Trinity is one of its usual arsenal of attacks, which is a tri-elemental group uh, brave attack into HP attack. Again, uh, it's very similar to his recast ability that as long as shields are up and Warrior of Light has his LD effect, it doesn't do anything. Lastly, one other thing to really take note is that every now and then Shinryu will use Intimidate or Intimidate Plus, which not only raises its stats and reduces its brave damage taken by a percentage amount, it's a very annoying attack because it tends to inflict a range of generic debuffs on the party. 
such as attack down, defense down, engrave down, and max grave down. And because of these characters that have debuff immunity effects, or at least uh, buffers who can push off these debuffs, do have some value here because uh, they can help to actually prevent the debuffs from this attack. Otherwise, if your characters are inflicted by these debuffs, it will significantly cut down the brave damage dealt to Shin Ryu. So taking all this into consideration, I chose a party of Warrior of Light, BB and Afbao. So first of all, Warrior of Light is a given, um, mainly because, not, not only because it's his event, but as I've mentioned, having his LD and shields will render a lot of the HP attacks of this fight um, useless and will keep your party safe throughout the entire fight. Of course him being a synergy unit on this event also significantly helps in terms of the damage potential. Next, I decided to put in the Afmao for this Lufania fight mainly for her debuff immunity to prevent the, the debuffs that Shinryu can do through Intimidate. She also has a useful speed down that she can inflict on Shinryu through her attack and I, I think she's quite useful for this fight mainly because her kit contains a mix of bravery type of HP damage plus brave attacks type, type of HP damage. In a sense, her, her first skill, her S1 um, batteries the entire party before unleashing this as brave damage, as HP damage, sorry. And her S2 will unleash a range of brave attacks into HP damage. Likewise, after using her EX, her brave attack gets converted to, gets converted to a <coughs> brave region type of HP damage and her HP attack gets converted to a brave attack or brave hits type of HP damage which, which is very helpful to get around the blue and purple aura that Shinryu has. So to round off the party, my last character I put in was Vivi. With, his, with the debut of his LD weapon, Vivi's um, damage potential is top tier at this point in time and so he rounds up this party quite nicely. And as I mentioned earlier, Vivi in his kit having focus and fire also can get around the blue and purple aura that Shin Ryu has. With Vivi inside the party, my summon of choice is Odin because once Vivi uses his LD, uh, you immediately get the attack up buff from Odin which helps a lot to push damage through on the later parts of the fight. And Although Vivi's LD has, in, has an HP drain effect, uh, as long as Warrior of Light has his shields and LD up, uh, you can actually just let the HP drain effect drain your HP away because um, you shouldn't be taking any HP damage from Shinryu at all. So that's it, that's it, let's head into the fight. I'll see you there. I think on the first wave, it's pretty simple, uh, just keep the damage up as you ramp up uh, your characters. With Afbao on the first wave, you want to even out her skill users because you actually need both of her skills on her sec on the second wave. With Vivi, I, I always go EX first before I use his LD because his LD also helps to charge his EX meter. And Warrior of Light, I immediately start off the fight by using his LD because that will apply lock on on the boss as well as provide shields to the entire party in one move. The drawback of using this party that I forgot to mention is that Afma herself has a lot of 
framed buffs and the problem with that is that it tends to push off the generic buffs that Vivi gets through his, his focus and actually cuts down a lot on Vivi's max brave because part of his kit is a significant max brave up generic buff from the focus ability however I think it's a relatively small price to pay for the debuff protection and the first healing that Afmao provides as well as of course uh, some very nice attack auras to the party to ensure the damage that they do remains high using Vivi's LD uh, immediately after using his EX will also drain about 40% HP from your entire party as you can see and this will immediately trigger Odin's 30% attack blessing which helps to supplement the attack aura from Afmao. Okay, so the Shinryu has used its precast ability and because I have shields and warrior plus LD it does zero damage and the best way to approach this is to especially if you're using VV is to try to heal up before it uses its precast ability because uh, after that uh, you will not be able to heal until it's dead it's not that bad because you can always heal at the start of the second wave but at least doing so, you do preserve some amount of health and can go into the second wave without too much uh, HP loss present. Okay, so starting the second wave, I still have an Amidatalian friend unit as well as summon intact and I tend to use it on the later parts of the fight because Amidatalian's LD has a very potent brave battery effect and that helps to bypass Shinryu's extremely high defense and brave reduction effect at the end of the fight where it's, it's where the brief damage that you do is significantly lower so here Shinru has started off the fight with the yellow aura which prevents knockback and delay and you do need to pay attention for when he changes auras the game will actually tell you when he does that as well as what the aura does so you, you, need, you need as long as you pay attention to the change of auras you should be fine and you just uh, use the appropriate moves accordingly based on what aura Shinryu is in 
For yellow and green aura, you don't have to do anything special, you just pile on the damage as usual. And when he's in blue and purple aura, you do need to tailor your attacks accordingly. So he changes aura to purple, where Brave, Regen, and HP uh, healing abilities are locked. And you can see that the aura has now changed to purple. So in this aura with Aura of Light, you want to avoid using his S1 because it does, uh, it does have a certain Brave Regen effect. With Afmao, you want to use 6 element, her S2, and avoid using Shield Subverter, her S1. With Vivi, there's not much point using Focus while the purple aura is up, so you can just use his fire ability, which will still deal some decent amount of damage. So just, just stick like this. Uh, Warrior of Light in the purple aura, you can also use his EX or LD depending on your needs. So now uh, Shinryu has changed to the green aura and with the green aura you can you can take the opportunity to quickly heal up and use your other attacks. The green aura is a pretty safe aura. I also choose to bring in my Abyssal Lion and summon during this green aura. On hindsight, I think it would be better to actually save summon and the support unit till the later parts of the fight. Just to note though that if you are using a mid lion friend support, the best time to use it is when green aura is up. Because the worst aura to have a mid lion up is the purple aura because it will prevent the brave battery from her LD ability. And once the green aura is up, she needs to change aura 3 more times until she gets the purple aura again. So it gives you the biggest window of time to use mid Lion's LD 3 times consecutively. I like to pair Amidus Lion with Summon because once you delete turns while inside Summon, you can see that the after Summon has ended, the boss's turns are pushed very very far back, which gives you many turns to pile on damage before Shinryu gets its next turn.
Okay, so finally Shinryu is about to get his turn again. So uh, during the Emitted Lion support plus summon, I managed to bring Shinryu down to about 40% HP. And throughout the time, he re remained in the green and yellow aura. Finally, Shinryu here changed to the purple aura. So it's just a matter of wins and repeating. So purple aura prevents brave region. So you want to use abilities that do not rely on brave region as the source of damage. So here I use the converted HP attack from Afmao as well as her 6 element to do some nice damage. So at least acceptable damage. Okay, so green aura again, this is where you can go all out. You just have to be careful that the recast ability is up, so you just need to make sure that everyone is shielded and Warrior of Light has his uh, LD passive up. If not, then you want to quickly refresh shields or use his LD before Shin Ryu can use his, his recast ability. On hindsight, I think the second time he reaches the green aura would be the better time to summon. So. Uh, don't be like me if you are using Ambitor Client, friend support and summon, save it for when Shinryu is at the green aura the second time. You, you will make much better use of the Brave Region effect from Ambitor Client support. Okay, so blue aura, so uh, which makes all brave hits do zero damage. Even despite that, it's still a good idea to use Afmao's EX ability because you do get some free attacks after that from her puppets. So here, uh, because fire and will do will do zero damage, using Vivi's focus, you can see still give a nice region into HP dump, which is still quite nice damage. And with War of Light using Shining Shield, still still does maximum damage here because Shining Shield doesn't has a Brave Hit component to it. So paying attention to the blue and purple aura and adjusting attacks is really the key to continuously damage Shinryu throughout the entire fight. So blue aura here you want to use her converted Brave attack which is the off jung attack rather than the managing attack, I don't know how to pronounce that, but um, because th that attack has a brave region, and likewise, using shield subverter also has a brave region effect, so it still pushes through some nice damage overall. And that's it, so over the entire fight, uh, Shinryu will continue to cycle through the four color auras. And as I mentioned, it's just a matter of adjusting your attack based on the blue and purple aura with your party to continuously push damage through. Other than that, the fight is pretty straightforward and just keeping an eye on Warrior of Lights, LD and Shields will always ensure that you take 0 HP damage from Jin Ryu throughout the entire fight.
that's it. As always, if you enjoy the video, do leave a like, leave a comment or subscribe. Until then, I'll see you in the next Lufania fight. Bye-bye.